So feel free to use the chat readily um, and keep yourself muted. Um, as you can see, we have lots of people in the call today, so which is a wonderful thing, really, really wonderful to have you here. Um, so I'm gonna just get us, move us into getting started. Um, if you're just joining us, then welcome. Just to frame our call today, what brings us all here just this week, we had 25 deaths in Kentucky from extreme flooding, an unprecedented heat wave in England with temperatures reaching over 40 degrees just last week. Forest fires are blazing through the Czech Republic and the cost of living crisis means that food and fuel prices have more than tripled just this year alone, causing a rupture in climate progress and limiting those with the lowest socioeconomic experience from accessing what they need. These are all just hints at what is to come. We don't have time left to wait. If you could please mute yourself. If you're joining the meeting, welcome. We don't have time left to waste. The climate crisis is already here. It's here if we're brave enough to see it. And that's you. Thank you for being here, for being here tonight to be part of that change. This is going to take all of us. I'm just wanting to give us an opportunity to welcome each other. So if you if you've participated, we did this last time, but it's really wonderful to hear everybody's voices just for a moment in the space. Um, so if you've participated in a, in a rebellion or, or in an Extinction Rebellion action before, I invite you to unmute yourself and say hello. 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 Hi. Hello. 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 Good company. Hello. 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 Thank you. Thank you for being here. Hello. Hello. It's wonderful to hear your voices. Um, and now if you're new yeah, to Extinction new. Rebellion or you've never you've never been in, involved in an action yet or you're just sort of curious about getting involved, um, then I invite you too to unmute yourself and let us hear your voice. Welcome. Yeah. Hi. Hello. <laughs> wonderful to have you and wonderful to hear your voices. Thank you, everybody. Welcome, welcome. And also just wanting to send a big welcome to our Facebook and YouTube audiences. We can't hear you today, but we celebrate that you're here with us um, in the virtual world, wherever you may be. Um, so wonderful to have all of you here present with us today. Um, I'm going to start by just giving a little bit of a, an overview of the structure of this open call. So we all have an idea of what to expect. Just a reminder, if you are with us today, if you could please keep yourself muted. We have lots of people on the call. And even though um, you may think you're very quiet, little ambient sounds can come through. So please mute yourself if possible. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, so the call tonight, well, we'll plan to start by just reminding ourselves briefly of, of this crisis that we're in, um, really setting the foundation for the actions that we're, that we're going to be talking about and exploring later in the call. We'll explore our current state of democracy and our fight to sort of upgrade and revolutionize it into a new form of participatory, inclusive, and deliberative democracy. We'll go a little deeper into this sort of into the separate phases of rebellion that we talked about in our last open call. If this is your first time in one of our open calls tonight, welcome. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the specifics of what each of those phases will look and feel like logistically, emotionally, and practically and how you can get involved because we, we need people to be involved in every phase of this. So we're really wanting to set clear pathways for involvement um, to help make, make each of those phases really come to life. Um, mm. And after that, we'll, we'll move on to an open yeah. Q&A session as talked about before. Um, so please keep track of your questions as we go or post them in the chat when they come up for you and we'll capture them and, and, and bring them into the Q&A session um, later on. Um, so that's true also for our Facebook and YouTube audiences. If you're there and you have questions, please pop them in the chat on those forums. And um, we have people who are sort of watching um, with eagle eyes to be able to capture them and bring them to the, to the question space today too. Um, and then we'll, we'll plan to finish by 9 p.m. Um, which I will really try to commit to. As I said last time, timekeeping is not always my strongest suit, but there we are. Last time I did it, I think we were only two minutes over. So we'll see about tonight. Um, so yes, that's our structure for tonight's meeting. And I'm just gonna talk briefly a little bit 
about our September planning process in Extinction Rebellion. Um, for those of you who are new um, to the call and new to this process, uh, I want to just talk a little bit about how we're doing it this time. One of the one of the big um, the the big sort of milestones for this big next time of action, this big rebellion, was to do something radically different. We need to try different approaches. We need to be in that space of surprise once more and communicate to the public and to a broader audience what it is we're doing and why we're doing that to give people an opportunity to get involved in action um, as this crisis becomes so much more the forefront of the media and, and of our lived experience. Um, so we're trying something different, which is exciting um, and new. Um, and one of the ways that we're trying to do things radically differently is, is, is these open calls. So we'll be running these open calls every two weeks with more information coming to you as soon as it's available. Really, really wanting to listen to that past feedback about how confusing it was to show up on, on the day of rebellion and not really know what was going on. We really want everybody to be involved um, in this process as early um, as possible. Um, so that's why we're holding these, these open calls. Each one will be different. We'll have different people to speak to different questions um, and also different content that is, is made available from lots of different circles in Extinction Rebellion as they develop the plan more and more. Um, and we are bringing that to you. The open call crew is bringing that to you to make that part of the process transparent. Um, if you can't make an open call, do not worry too much. A message will be posted on the Rebellion broadcast channel on Telegram. Um, if you're not familiar with that link, maybe one of our tech wizards can, can pop it in the chat um, so you can be signposted there as well. There's lots of interesting information about actions that happen through Extinction Rebellion on that channel, um, including a sort of an open call update post that will come out tomorrow, um, which just kind of winds up all the content, the, the sort of key information from this call um, in a really simple form. So you can kind of di digest that or, or forward it on to your local group or other people um, that you know who, are, who aren't able to make it tonight, um, but might be interested in the material that's covered. Um, and then just before we dive into the content tonight, I'm just wanting to welcome those folks that you see on your screen in front of you, and those folks who are pinned, um, who are here tonight to present information for us, gathered from lots of different circles and lots of different spaces across the movement, um, and to answer your questions about September. This is our open call, all, our wonderful open call crew. Um, hello, open call crew, welcome, welcome. I'm just going to invite you, as we did last time, to just invite you uh, to just unmute yourself one by one and say who you are. So I'll start. Um, my name is Rosie. As I said, I'm going to facilitate tonight's meeting. Yeah, I'm Yaz. I'm going to talk a bit about the bigger picture, the state of the climate and the environment, and also our state of democracy as well. Jimmy, I believe it's you. <laughs> I, I don't know how I was to know that it was me, but anyway. Uh, hi, I'm Jimmy. I'm here to talk to you about what's happening in the first phase of our rebellion in September, and also what will be happening in the last of the phases. Hi, I'm Jimmy. I'll be talking to you about what happens in our second phase, which is um, our three days in London. Hello, I'm Gully. I'll be talking to you about, or with you, about the bus tour, which is the best bit between you and me. Hi everyone, I'm Sammy, here to help with legal questions and stuff. Yeah. We also have a wonderful, another uh, legal maestro, who is Mike, who will be answering questions on legal, uh, legal topics if they come up as well. Hi everyone, I'm Alana. Um, I'm on the XR Media team, so any media related questions I can help with. Thank you. Uh, I'm Andy. Uh, I'm here to help answer any kind of general rebellion questions um, to do with how people can get involved and what the plan might look like. Uh, I'll hand back to you, I think. Rosie? Yeah, thanks, Andy. Um, also welcoming Ned and Ems and Vlad, who are all here on our wonderful tech team. Um, they're not their videos are not pinned, but you will see them in and amongst the crowd. Their videos, I think, I saw Ned was just waving. Welcome everybody, and thank you for um, for being here um, and for all your help. So, without further ado, I'm going to pass over to Yaz, who will give you a brief, a brief sort of framing of why we are here and why we are taking action. Over to you, Yaz. Yeah, thanks, Rosie. 
Okay, so I'm just going to lay out the situation. So it's 2022. Last year, our chief scientific advisor told us that our activities in the next two years will determine the fate of humanity. In the coming months, we face a crippling rise in the cost of living because of, of an outdated system of politics that just doesn't work. It just doesn't serve people like us and doesn't understand our values and it doesn't meet our basic needs. We all know that our climate is in a state of crisis. We just had the hottest day in history last week. Wildfires raging across Europe from Bordeaux to, to Croydon, to Czech Republic, to Doncaster, currently undergoing in California. Some of the earliest harvests on record in this country, the driest July in over a hundred years, and a country on the verge of a declared drought. And science also tells us that our effect on nature is severe. There was a recent report convened by the United Nations that found a quarter of animal species threatened with extinction today, a quarter of plants as well, a third of marine mammals, 40% of amphibian species, half a million species of insects, all threatened. These are, these are signals, these are signs, which scientists say point us towards an already ongoing mass extinction, something matched on only five other occasions in evolutionary history. And, and so much of these changes are already baked in. Our activities have already irreversibly adjusted the trajectory of the Earth system. So according to the IPCC, in all scenarios, the seas will rise for 10,000 years. Our coral reefs arguably are already lost, jeopardizing a million species and millions of people. In the continent of Africa, 700 million people will need to leave their homes because of a lack of water in only a handful of years. That's half the population of Africa on the move. What will happen to those people? Like, where will they go? <laughs> and whose fault is that, right? These are people from countries that have had no driving role in global warming. And in fact, when we look at the history of carbon emissions, it's here that we find the responsibility. The United Kingdom is the country which initiated industrial civilization. It's the country which invented engines. It has almost more historical emissions than every other country. It's, the, it's had almost 100 years of a head start and it continues to build coal mines in Cumbria and gas rigs in the North Sea, enabling energy companies to be richer than ever at a time when people are struggling more than ever. It's a country which, which just hosted the most important climate conference in history, but completely failed to secure a deal that would actually preserve a future that we can live with. The United Kingdom is a country it's claiming to be a world leader, <laughs> but it's just leading the world into self-annihilation, whose democratic representatives refused to attend a climate briefing, the first of its kind, secured by a hunger strike that nearly ended a man's life. Angus Rose ate nothing for 37 days just to put the science in front of ministers' faces and under 10% attended. Our entire political system is completely incapable of dealing with a crisis on the scale and urgency of this emergency. But it doesn't have to be like this. True democracy doesn't need to be this way. True democracy is, is deliberate, it's informed. What we need is a, is a new form of democracy, something truly revolutionary. And, and in Extinction Rebellion, we already know what that is. We already know what we need. It's called deliberative democracy comes in the form of citizens' assemblies. And we know citizens' assemblies have worked all across the world. So they're organized independently. Hundreds of people are selected like a jury, representative of all people from all backgrounds. They get big questions, 
weeks of discussion, they're paid for their time, provided with expert guidance, independent scientific advice, and they can come together to seriously agree on just and fair solutions to the biggest problems in our lives. No, don't you dare pull me like that. <laughs> so the thing about citizens' assemblies, right, is that ordinary people are free from lobbying, from financial interests, they're free from party corruption, they're able to think in the long term and make choices that benefit everyone. And this autumn, we're going to need that more than ever. We face a crisis of our times, rising costs, basic needs, food, energy, warmth, all threatened, huge inequality, staggering political turmoil. So it takes our obedience as a country for granted, assumes that amnesia <laughs> that we forget the faces of the people that brought us here assume that we'll forgive the betrayals of a party that just yesterday and over the last few years has completely let our whole country down that will settle for so little ministers hide in a bubble in london like a handful of people talking to themselves speaking for a country of 67 million but imagine if only a fraction of us joined up and sat outside Westminster, refusing to let ministers get to work until they meet with us. Imagine them actually having to listen to ordinary people's tales of not being able to heat their homes or feed their children, their worries for the future, their problems with the past. Imagine the power we'd have demanding an inclusive democracy, a different democracy that undercut corruption, that enabled ordinary people to come together and make empowered decisions and that separated personal political prospects from the interests of everyone else. So, so that's where we want to get to. But first, you know, we need to do the work. And what we're presenting to you tonight is a plan for the next few months that can get us where we need to go. It's different to what XR has done in the past. It is it's an invitation to join in an effort that can actually win, but, but it needs your help. It won't happen without you. You know, there's hundreds of people in this call, thousands more I know watching online. Ask yourself, what can you dedicate in the next couple of months? You know, there's space for you in this movement. And um, I look forward to seeing where we get to because I think that this plan is really exciting. So I'll leave it to the rest of the group to talk about the nuts and bolts of all these individual phases and I'll pass it back to you Rosie thank you thank you Yaz for giving us that framing um I'm gonna pass it over to you Jimmy to give us some more to talk about phase one what what's that gonna look like what's it gonna feel like um give us an idea of what that opening will be go ahead Jimmy all right so there's four there's four of these phases just so you know Book four coming up. This is the first one. Um, how many of you uh motorhead fans? Anyone a motorhead fan? Um, all right, so uh there's a there's a phrase that um Lemmy said, um, and he said somebody asked him, I think somebody from a from another a young band that was starting up, they asked him, um, you know, how will I know if, if what we're doing is, is any good? How will I know if it will be popular? How do we know if it will be cool? And Lemmy said, all you got to do is run it up the flagpole and see who salutes it. So that's um, what we're doing. And phase one of this deal is running it up the flagpole. So there's two real parts to it. One part is super secret. And the other part is what you guys are going to be doing. So I can't tell you too much about the super secret part because duh, it's super secret. But um, it will, uh, if it comes off, if it comes off, it'll be pretty cool. And it'll um, ever get everyone all buzzed up, get everyone excited. And it'll, um, and it'll bring the, the, the issues that Yaz just talked about up into the foreground of the uh, conversation. Uh, the national conversation and it'll do that um that so that's the bit that um 
uh, that's the super secret bit. And everyone, all the rest of us have got a role to play also in running it up the flagpole. And that is, we want to love bomb the London with printed poster material. So you guys better get um, a bucket and a mop and we're going to be going out on Friday night and we're going to make sure that everyone in uh, the whole in London can't fail to have seen the the uh, wall of posters that we're putting up. Um, and no, not just London, because I skipped a bit. Whoops. In the in the, in the run up to that, we'll, we're also having a poster campaign around um, around the country. So there's two two parts to the poster campaign. There's the, there's postering in your in your home area, and then for those of you that will be there in London on the Friday night before the first day of the official rebellion, we're inviting everyone to go out that night and poster like hell, and we will provide the posters. You provide the hell. Thank you, Jimmy. Sounds exciting. Um, I'll pass over to Jimmy to, to lead us in phase two. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Phase two. So I'll just, let me just phrase this quickly. In April 2019, ordinary people from across the country all came together and boldly occupied Oxford Circus with a pink boat and transformed Waterloo Bridge into a garden. And Exa has done many other things since then, great things, important things, but still, three and a half years later, those spaces, those moments, are the things that a lot of us remember and wish we could recreate. But why were the spaces so impactful, both internally and externally? Well, one of the reasons was that they were disruptive, a busy junction and a busy bridge. That's one side of it. And it was bold and unexpected and new to the police. But that wasn't the only reason we were so passionately trying to hold and defend those spaces. It's what those spaces meant, what they had to offer to us and anyone walking by. It's the fact that every single person present had something to offer and had an active part in building that space, envisioning the world we want to live in with participation, inclusivity, creativity, and radical love at its core. That's what those spaces were. So this is what we're aiming to do this time around. So from Saturday the 10th until Tuesday the 13th of September, we will audaciously occupy a green space and hold a three-day festival of resistance in London. Carrying on from where we left off, on the morning of Saturday the 10th, we will meet once again at Marble Arch, roll up our sleeves and in the spirit of we're all crew, it, which is a phrase we like to use a lot, we're gonna build our site from the ground up and we'll use our collective skill, creativity and collaboration to attempt, and re to, to, attempt to recapture that magic, that essence of April, 2019 and use it to launch us into this new phase in, in our journey as a movement. So during the three days, we will hold talks, trainings and workshops, share stories, dance and cook food together. Um, for us rebels, the intention is to share learnings and resources about community mobilization. What has worked, what hasn't? How can we reach different groups of people? And especially how can we ensure Mobilization is exciting, powerful, and effective for all of us because it's such an important, important thing of, of the work that needs to be done. So we will upskill ourselves on how to run and inspire people about citizens' assemblies and deliberative democracy. And for the public, the intention is to invite them in to learn more about the power and real achievements of citizens' assemblies and how civil disobedience can bring urgent social and political change. We will offer the opportunity for anyone to experience solidarity and resistance in a space held collectively with love, 
while we explore a vision of a different future. We extend our invitation to other movements as well to join us and share the work and the knowledge with us and begin working towards building something stronger together. So this might not sound as exciting or, or radical as previous rebellions. And you might be sitting there thinking, oh great, so we're just gonna hang out in the park for three days. Where's, where's the um, mass action? Where's the mass disobedience? This is the disobedience. This is an occupation. So this is the action. So we're asking anyone able to, to leave your valuables behind, pack only what's necessary and come down to London and camp and defend our site. So we'll be camping there as well, those of us who can. Um, so get in your affinity groups and join the occupation. Our intention for these three days is, is to hold the site and have it be as accessible and inclusive as possible. We want everyone to feel able to join us. But obviously this being an occupation, it's likely that the police will come in to try and move us. We, we will be prepared to liaise with them if that happens and get them to let us stay. But to pull this off, we need to avoid having scattergun spicy AG affinity group actions happening that can be linked to the occupation as that will compromise our camp and give the police more reason to try and turf us out. So, we're putting all of our attention and our focus and our creativity and passion into this one space for three days. On Tuesday morning, when the three days are done, um, we will declare a win on our own terms and decide together how to go out with a ban and into our next phase of rebellion. Thank you. Thanks, Demi. Um, me next, I'm gonna to talk to you about the what we're going to do after London. Um, so after the three days of being together, uh, we will go on the move for a period of re regional mobilization. So when we're together in London with all our energy, we will launch three rebellion buses, which will travel the country for four weeks. The plan is to organize one big people's assembly in each region or nation um, around which we can collectively mobilize. And as we visit local groups on the way, the mission of the bus at each stop is to celebrate our local groups and offer real practical help in the outreach work so we can build these really strong regions. We're inviting regions to guide us on where the buses should travel and the local groups to have an outreach activity planned which will make real use of the bus crew when they arrive. We'll be working on a media campaign that will generate like a real buzz around these buses so that when they pass through, they can bring with them a real storytelling from where they've been and a burst of energy and love and be of genuine value to the XR groups that we, we visit. In our outreach, the aim of the game is to inspire and educate the public on our radical third demand, the revolutionary power of citizens' assemblies, and encourage them to participate in their regional people's assembly that we're putting on. As a visualization of this dream of ours that we share of community and democracy, we'll be asking two opposing questions of everyone we meet. What are you most afraid of? And what is your vision for a better future? The answers to these two questions will be written on the side of the buses so that through our physical journey, we will weave together a story of our time, building a narrative across the movement and the country that we're all in this together and that together we can get ourselves out of it. As well as our buses, we'll be launching something else in September, a clear unifying call to action for spring 2023, for the big one, the one we've been working towards. A credible plan to secure a citizen's assembly and an end to the fossil fuel economy once and for all. A plan that will only work, but it will work if enough people commit to joining us. So we'll bring this plan to our communities, meeting them where they are on this four week journey and ask them to pledge to be a part of it so that we become too big to ignore. The teams for these buses are forming really well and things are starting to get moving. What we really need, I'm just gonna do a quick plug at the end of my bit, is drivers. <laughs> if you can drive a bus, uh, maybe we'll say more about that afterwards, but if you are a driver, 
you maybe are the hero we need. So please get in touch and we'll say a bit more about that in a second. This is a radical, galvanizing and necessary plan and it's different to anything we've done before, but it's nothing without the people to make it happen. So please get involved. And I'll pass back to Jimmy for our final section. Me again. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna do mobilization like it's rebellion. We're gonna bring it to where you all live. Um, and that Gully's right, that is the most important part of this this job of autumn, of September. That's the most important part. Um, however, um it's not the um it's not the end point of that part. So like um the most important part of a book is is this is the middle but you can't have a book really without an ending so phase four is the end point and what we'll be mobilizing people uh for um in the short term the long-term thing is what, what gully said the really exciting bit but in the short term we'll be mobilizing them for towards a thing that they can then grab hold of and do at the end of that period that's phase four that's the um the other bookend um and uh what is that well i can tell you some stuff about it i can tell you when it'll be it'll be starting on the 14th of october that's when it starts and it'll end when they drag the last one of us away it'll be in london westminster probably um so what will we do? We'll go there and stay until they drag us away. And that's what we'll be inviting people to do. Um, but you lot, those of you who are already sort of in, it's a bit, you know, in Extinction Rebellion, or those of you who want to be, you will have a role more than just sitting down. Your role will be to form part of the invitation for, for everyone to come on the 14th of October. So there's that. And the other part of your role will be to support those people who don't have a role. So um, if anyone was on the bridges in November 2018, that's the that's the sort of picture to have, I think, of what it'll of what it'll look and feel like. Um, so who um who will do it? Everyone who consider themselves to be an Extinction Rebellion, please. Everyone we've mobilized during the tour and anyone else. And um, uh, the reason that the, the, the banner will be under, apart from our own, is we'll be um, platforming the immediate demand, which is already part of Extinction Rebellion's strategy. The fossil immediate end to fossil new fossil fuel demand um and we'll be demanding our citizens assembly so it'll be a very simple um uh job but also not easy and that's what will that'll be the last but the the end point of uh, our fate this phase of rebellion Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you all. Um, and thank you all for being patient while we while we go into more detail about each of these areas. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the call, this is all emergent information. It's constantly changing and growing and expanding. So any feedback is really gratefully received. Um, and and we really encourage you to get in touch with your your sort of regional or local group sort of um, representatives so that we can we can really bring in lots of feedback um, and also feel free to to post things in the chat as well. Really great to see such such enthusiasm for the plan so far. Um, and and by the next time we meet in two weeks, there'll be lots of um, new juicy information as things kind of really get down to the wire and we um, start bringing things um, to being. So thank you all for for listening and for um and for posting your questions and your thoughts in the chat so far um the next thing i'm going to be talking about is um is ways that you can get involved hooray um we need you we need you um to be involved as gali said this is all about um the people people power um, and coming together to really make that change um that we desperately desperately need um, so I'm going to post in the chat, if you will bear with me for one moment, while I copy and paste these links. 
I'm going to post in the chat a few links um, for you. Let's see if this works. Obviously not a very skilled multitasker. There we go. So here are a few links for you, for you to peruse um, right now and also copy paste it into your browser. So we're into some sort of um, other space so that you can kind of peruse it at your own speed. Um, but I would say the, the most important two steps that you can do right now or right after this call um, is number one, let us know that you're coming to September, coming in September by signing up on our, on our sign up form, which is newly launched, I think today or in the last couple of days. And that's that action network link, the first link that's in that, um, I think it's the first, yeah, the first link that's in that, um, that post there, sign up for September here. Um, and I'm gonna pause right now to give you an opportunity to do that <laughs> as we sit here. If you are coming in September, if you're curious about coming in September and want to have updated information about what's going on, deliver directly to your mailbox, then I'm going to urge you to sign up right now. And I'm not going to give any more information for one minute to give you an opportunity to do that in an uninterrupted fashion. Um, so here it is. Can Sorry, I just add, Rosie, that it's also just for practical, logistical reasons, it's really going to be really helpful for us to know how many people are coming. So please fill out, even if you think I don't want the email. It's for us also to feed you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Very, very important. Thank you, Kelly. Please do it not just for a tick box, but also so that we have practical information. Um, so we can give you the support that you need to get there um, and give you the information that you need um, to be part of this mass moment um, in history. Um, so that minute is done. I'm going to keep giving you information. But if you haven't signed up right now, then I encourage you to do so as soon as the meeting is done so that we have that information. Um, the next, the other sort of really important thing, and Gali also mentioned this earlier, um, that we're really encouraging people to, to kind of to do on their pathway to being involved is to put yourself forward for a, a volunteer role. We have some urgent roles to help us prepare for the rebellion and to help us um, fill certain positions um, and to make this plan happen. Gully mentioned the drivers, that is one. Please, if you have a certain type of license that means you can drive large vehicles, then we need you, but we need everybody. There are so many different roles that are available um, and needed and, um, and valued. So please check out that, um, that link that on the volunteer website. Um, and I'm going to um, give a nod to Gully, who's going to share her screen maybe <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna walk through how to make this happen so um because it's it's a bit tricky or it can be a bit tricky so we're just gonna kind of talk you through that um or hopefully um so if you can see on your screen there is she clicked on the link and here it is there is urgent rebellion roles and as you can see, there's some information about what roles we're really looking for. Now, this is constantly updated. So the information today may be different tomorrow. So if you have anywhere from two hours, one hour a week to offer to the planning for this rebellion, please check out this list whether or not there's something there that you have an interest in doing or that you are capable of doing. And Gully is clearly highlighting one specific one, but all of these are really important um, as are many other roles. Even if none of these appeal to you or you don't feel like you can do any of these roles, please, if you have time to give, just apply and let us know in your email or let us know when you can. Oh, here's Gully applying. See an opportunity to put your name, your email, your occupation is optional, obviously. And then there's a there's a box that 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 gives you an opportunity to elaborate to expand on what sort of things you would like to give now that could be a specific role that um that you saw on that volunteer website or it could be i don't want to do any of these roles but i am an amazing carpenter or i can do this other wacky thing and i really want to contribute um whatever it might be or even i i don't really feel like i have any skills to give but i have time that is valued it's so important so Whoever you are, whatever you, whatever gifts you give the world, we really need you on board. So please just apply whether now while I talk or after this meeting or tomorrow, whatever it might be. If you have time to give, we will gladly receive it um, and be very grateful. Um, 
to make this come alive, to make this happen. So those are our two key areas of being involved. Please sign up on that September form and also volunteer, apply on the volunteer website if you have the time. Thank you, Gully, for, um, for working your magic on the, the shared screen. Um, and as I said, that, that list on the volunteer website will be updated regularly with new roles and new things to do. So please keep checking it um, and apply if you have time to give. There are all, uh, uh, I think a couple of people mentioned in the chat um, that they're not on Telegram. And so the Rebellion broadcast doesn't feel <clears throat> like a very usable space for them to access information. This September page on the XRUK website is also our one-stop shop for information. So everything we've talked about today, everything that will be in that Rebellion broadcast post tomorrow will be available on the, on the website as well. Um, I'm just gonna pop that link in the chat too. Um, so that will be regularly updated um, as new information becomes available, as we make it available in these open calls um, now and in an ongoing fashion. Um, so those are some of our key ways of getting involved at this, at this point. Um, so please, please get involved. Please check things out. Um, we'd love to have you on the team. Um, and now our time has come to put it over to you to see where your questions and curiosities are. Um, so I'm opening up the chat. If you haven't already, we've been capturing the questions that have been coming up so far, but if you haven't already, please pop your questions in the chat. Um, we know that this is not gonna be everyone's perfect plan. So this is just a disclaimer. It doesn't, it, we all have different ideas of the quote unquote right thing to do um, at this point. And nobody really knows what the right thing to do is. We've tried some things, we've tried other things, and this is trying something different. And we're leaning into that um, with a hope and with a trust and with a vivacious energy for change. Um, and we hope that you will join us um, to do that. So please, if you have questions um, to help answer things that would that would help you feel able to be involved, please pop them in the chat. Um, and the last thing to say before I sort of open it up to those questions is that some of these questions that you have been putting in the chat are wonderful and we don't necessarily have all the answers to them yet. We decided to start these open calls at an early enough point that we could answer some information. So you had the information that you needed and that we could gather the questions that are coming up for you and get you the information as soon as possible. But because we've started these open calls early, we don't have all of the answers yet but your questions help inform the content that we provide for the next open call. So, um, so please, yeah, be, be, we may not have the answer, um, but we will hear it and we will um, hopefully let it inform our next, our next session. So um, please be patient <laughs> um, and understand that we are capturing all of the things that are coming into the chat, regardless of whether we have the answers or not. Um, without any more delays, I'm going to sort of open up to these questions um, and have a look at some of the questions that have come through. Um, starting with, I'm gonna pass over to Andy for the first question, which is, will there be a digital rebellion? So over to you, Andy. Hi, thank you. Um, yes, we always try and incorporate a, a digital element to all of our rebellions, just to ensure that um, they're as accessible for everyone as possible. Uh, and this rebellion will be no different. So there will definitely be uh, certain digital elements to several of the phases, uh, which should hopefully uh, encourage lots of people at home to participate in that element of it too. So yes, there will be. Amazing. Thank you, Andy. Um, so I'm going to pass over to, there are some questions around messaging, um, which is such an important thing, I think, and I'm going to, I'm going to pass over, there's a question, what is the message here? Um, I'm going to pass over initially to Gully, who's going to answer to that question, and then pass over to Alana, because there's some more, some of you expanded even further, how do we reach journalists? How do we touch the hearts and minds of the people who are, who are, who are going to be covering this? And, and how do we, um, how do we uh, break through into the media? So I'm going to start with Gully over to you and then pass over to Alana as a separate um, and, and connected question. Um, cool. I'll have a go. Alana's probably better to answer both of these, but I will say um, we're, we're focusing strongly on our broken, absolutely disastrous political circumstances in the UK right now. The new prime minister will be announced on the 5th of September. We will be having our occupation starting from, well, the 9th, really, but fully from the 10th. The idea is that we are hammering home our really the most radical demand that we have, which is the Citizens' Assembly on climate and ecological justice um, as an antidote to the absolute 
abject failure of politicians to do the job. Um, and the idea is that we are in the, the centre of London, just as the new prime minister has announced, actively building the opposition. Because the opposition doesn't exist, we are the opposition. Um, and we won't let go of our immediate demand, which is an immediate end to the fossil fuel economy. That's what we'll be bringing around the country. Alana. Um, yeah, there's some great questions about uh, the media. Um, yeah, so just this one from Denise. Uh, how do we get uh, Murdoch et al. owned media to cover this? And how do we reach the hearts and minds of the journalists? Um, great question. Um, but I, I I, actually, I don't think journalists, I don't think it's as challenging as you think to, to get these, to get um, Murdoch owned media to cover our to cover our actions. I actually, um, you know, we, we speak to journalists quite regularly who um, tell us that they, that our actions are a great excuse for them to talk about climate. Um, so us just being on the street gives them reason to talk about it. Obviously, they are highly critical of us, but um, something that's you know exciting about what we're doing as Gully just said we're we're taking action right after the new prime minister is um is being chosen and we're going to be talking about um deliberative democracy so we're telling you know we're telling new stories we're telling we're challenging um the current narrative and also we just the idea of us traveling the country um, and telling local stories as well, um, you know, there'll there'll be an abundance of of, of new of new narratives um, that we can discuss. Um, so I think I think we're I think we're you know I think we're doing something different and exciting. Um, and I I yeah I believe it'll be um, there's there'll be some great stories. Thank you, Alana. Um, yeah, really amazing questions coming in. Thank you all. Keep them coming. Um, we won't be able to, to quite cover all of the questions today, but we, we can definitely um, post out more questions and more, more answers to things on the Rebellion broadcast and also um, prepare uh, using these questions as a basis for our next open call as well. So thank you. Keep, please keep them coming. Um, there are a couple of questions that are coming up about arrestability and, and sort of illegal action and the relationship with the police. So specifically, um, are, you, are the postering and marble arch elements likely to be arrestable actions? Um, I'm guessing there's a greater risk in the final stage was one question. And how do you hope to hold off police action in phase two? So if we're looking at phase two as a more accessible, inclusive, mobilizing outreach effort, then phase four, as, as James talked through, Jimmy talked through, is, is, um, is a little bit more spicy and a little bit more, we're gonna sit here until you meet our demands. And that's an important part of NVDA, of nonviolent direct action, which is what Extinction Rebellion is about. So there are lots of, lots of questions about, um, about arrestability and, and how, how we plan to relate uh, to our actions to the police and with the police. Um, so I'm gonna pass over to Andy to respond to some of those. And then following that, I'm going to pass on to Sammy to talk a little bit about um, protesting and sort of the updates of, of policing get, given the new act, the police crime and uh, sentencing in courts bill that is now an act rather than a bill. Um, so start with you, Andy, and then I'll pass over for some more legal advice from Sammy. Yeah, thank you. Um, so just speaking specifically to uh, the postering action that will happen on Friday night, um, and, and I think this is really important to remember for all actions uh, and, and pretty much every time we step out onto the street, every time we step out onto the street, there is a chance we will be arrested, whether we think we're doing something illegal or not. That's really, really important to remember uh, that, that there is a chance of a arrest uh, whenever we go out protesting. There's no such thing as an unarrestable action. Um, there's always that potential there. Um, so yes, potentially fly postering. It's quite a low risk uh, activity, um, but but there is the the potential there that you could um, potentially get done for criminal damage. Um, so that is that is there. Uh, there's also I think it's really important to remember that there is opportunities. Uh, we have a lot of existing rebels who are maybe thinking, ah, oh, this this particular rebellion isn't kind of spicy enough. Where's all the the kind of spicy actions? Um, so like um, James said, in phase one, we will have that very spicy launch action. Uh, there is also an opportunity that 
uh, Dimi mentioned in phase two that we will be going out with a bang. Uh, and I think that's really important to remember. Um, and uh, obviously phase four, which is the mass participation element, um, we will be in civil disobedience and we will be taking action, uh, like James said, until we are uh, either removed or we have one. Um, so those, those are lots of potential there. Uh, I'll hand over now uh, to Sammy, who can give you a little bit more about this really specific legal updates regarding the new police crime sentencing and courts bill. Well, um, sorry, my camera's a bit broken, so I'm just going to keep it off. But um, just to quickly jump into some updates, um, you might have heard the kind of notion that all protest is like illegal and all of that kind of thing. But that is not not the case. Obviously, there have been updates to legislation which has meant that it's more, more difficult to protest, possibly. We haven't actually seen any, um, seen any cases where the new legislation has been used just yet, but that's just because there haven't been any actions. Um, I think I'm going to put two links in the chat, which kind of cover, A, um, our updates to, the, to our guidance um, and also the legislation that we've kind of put together. It's on our website called Informed Dissent. I think Ned might include this in the follow-up as well, if possible. Um, but yeah, there's two links which I will just pop in the chat for now. Um, I think they are in there. Yeah, there they are. So the first one, the frequently used laws, um, it kind of just touches on some commonly used laws. It's all been updated to, to cover the, the new guidance and the new legislation um, from, from the PCSC Act. Um, yeah, which is now an act. Um, but yes, that's all kind of covered on the first link. And in the second link, it's kind of got five top tips, um, which you, everyone should just remember when, when going out to protest. Cool, I think that should cover it um, in as short as time as I have. Thank you, Sammy, that's really helpful. Um, and, and as you said, a lot of this is still emergent and it's brand new. And so we, we, there's some curiosity about how that will relate to us and our actions, but again, the reason that this police crime sentencing and courts bill has come into action is because of the effectiveness of nonviolent direct action. We should not let this intimidate us from being on the streets. The reason this is happening is because what we're doing is working. It is putting pressure in the right spaces, which is why they're trying to stop it. And, and we have an urgent, desperate need to make change in the face of the crisis we are seeing more and more frequently. So just also wanting to encourage that framing for, for any time we talk about these change in laws, um, that it is scary and it is intimidating, yes, but it is also a sign of the effectiveness of protest in, uh, in this way. Um, so there are a couple of questions about involving the Greens and, and, and JSO and collaboration and coalitions and things like that. And I'm gonna pass over to Jimmy to kind of speak to some of those relationships as well. Go ahead, Jimmy. Well, I can't say anything about the Greens. But um, if you know a green, bring bring them along. Um, yeah. Uh, so there was a. I just want to. There's one question I want. I can't resist answering. Somebody, uh, uh, Dirk, asks, "What what are the buses powered by?" And the answer is love. But um, I'm moving swiftly on. The um, Matt was asking, um, "Will the 14th of October be part of? Uh, we are all just. We all." Uh, one, we all want think what Just Stop Oil Coalition London October. Um, is it part of it? No, we're not officially part of that coalition. Um, however, let's not kid ourselves. Some of us know some of them, and some of them know some of us. And we know that a lot of those lot and other lots will be doing a lot in October. So we've um, had a chat with them to see where there was a quiet spot in the timeline and and guess what that quiet spot falls exactly where it's most convenient for us to do what we're doing in phase four because it means we will have had a month on the tour mobilizing people and telling them about it um, which we think is the optimal length of time for that and then boom so it'll all, it, the idea is that it, there'll be a, a sort of continuous smooth spread of uh, environmental alarm and dis raising and disruption throughout October. Does that cover that? Yeah, thank you, James. Um, 
pass over to Andy who wants to add something um, and then I'm conscious of time. So I'm gonna ask a couple, a couple of other questions and then we'll find closure. So for those of you who are need to go soon, do not worry, I'm aware of the time and we'll be finding closure soon. Go ahead, Andy. Thanks. Yeah, I think it's really important just to remember and, and reiterate, um, there's a lot of talk about coalitions at the moment, but ultimately for, for me, the way I envisage um, the whole of the climate movement is an ecology of movements. So there are lots of different groups all, but we're all aiming towards the same thing. So whether we have an official coalition or not, uh, it doesn't really matter. But from a tactical perspective, it's important that we're all like pretty much on the same page because together and collectively, we're gonna have so much more power. So whether you love Just Stop Oil or you hate Just Stop Oil, uh, it's important that there is some dialogue and communication there from a tactical perspective. Um, so we're keen just to think of it as an ecology where the things are working together, whether we're, you know, all, you know, whether we're on the exact same page or not. So I think that's really, really important to remember and, uh, and approach those relationships with a really open heart because, you know, JSO can offer things that Extinction Rebellion doesn't. Extinction Rebellion is the broad base. It's the numbers game. And that's what we're really concerned with this rebellion. So please bring a friend, bring everyone you know. That's what it's about. It's about showing love and dedication and being the people who can make that change. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you, Andy. Um, so just before we find some closure to the meeting today, there are a couple of other questions for clar or sort of clarifications, requests for clarifications on some of the things, um, one of which I've seen mentioned in the chat a few times about when will post or art be available. And um, I just want to let people know that our creative teams are working on that as we speak, um, those posters will be available to you very shortly. Um, we will take that feedback and bring it back to those teams to make sure that that happens as soon as possible. Um, but we hear you, um, so thank you for, for sharing that. And also some of you are interested in how to get involved with that fly posting, with that postering um, in the run up to Rebellion and also um, the night before. I think the best way to get involved in that um, in this in this time frame between now and when we meet in London um, is to get involved in your local group. Um, and local groups often organize really amazing paint the streets fly posting um, events. So please get in touch there and say you're interested in, in, in being involved in that. And um, that can be a really wonderful way of getting involved um, to begin with. Um, there was some clarification about the plan for October. I think some of that has been touched on a little bit more in the Q&A, um, but also just wanting to reiterate that um, anything that doesn't quite make sense will be in written format on the website and on the Rebellion broadcast channel by tomorrow. So keep an eye out there if, for, if you have sort of questions about things that we've covered that don't seem quite so clear. Um, and um, and there was a question about the difference between people's assemblies and citizens assemblies, and this is so important. I'm going to capture that one and, and bring it forward into our next open call, because that's such a big thing to talk about people's assemblies and to talk about citizens assemblies. And that clarification is really important. So we're going to, I'm going to try to invite somebody who, who can really speak to that with great clarity. Um, I, I imagine there are lots of different questions about citizens assemblies. There have been many in the chat today. And so without trying to, to shorten an answer to that, um, we will try to have that as, a, as content for our, um, our next open call. So put a pin in that one and come back in two weeks time. Um, and the last question I'm just going to come to tonight, um, while also reminding you that all of the other questions are captured, they're written in a document, we will, we will help them inform our next session, is will the bus be going to the southeast or near it at all? And the answer is yes, the bus will be going all around the UK. We have three different buses, the routes go all around. So absolutely, um, if it doesn't come right to your door, it'll be coming somewhere really close. So um, those routes will be published soon. If you have really strong feelings about different places that would really, that could really utilize that motivation or that sense of um, inspiration or whatever it might be that you imagine coming with the bus, then get in touch with your regional hive rep, which as Gali said in the chat, is, is, is the circle um, of a regional represent re representatives from all around the UK who take the feedback from their local groups um, and help it to inform the structure and the strategy of what we do in Extinction Rebellion. So please get in touch with your regional representative on the Hive who, who are helping to collaborate where, that, where the route of the buses go. So please get involved in that way and help us shape what that will look like. But absolutely, the buses will be going everywhere. They're going to North, Northern Ireland, into Scotland, into Wales, down south, all over the place. So please, please um, keep an eye out for the route when, as and when it is published, which will be soon. Um, so 
so I'm going to bring us to a close, take a bit of a breath after all that information. Thank you all for participating in all the ways that you have and posting your chat, your questions and listening and engaging. And most of all, for being here tonight to be part of this massive moment in human history. This effort for change is going to take each one of us, whether you're prepared to sit down in a road until the point of arrest, whether you're committing to knock on a thousand doors before next spring, or offer time to help coordinate teams of other people or cook food or build sculpture art to enliven our occupation or to message your friends to express the urgency of action at this point of crisis. I implore you to just take a moment to reflect on what your role in this important time looks like. We are all crew. We are all important. We are all involved, whether we want to be or not. You have taken that first step, being here to witness and to participate. And now you get to decide what comes next. So thank you. And we really hope to see you at the next open call and more importantly, out there on the streets. Thank you, everybody. And good night. See you soon. Bye. Thank you for the great call. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.